What's going on friends and family? We have the Meta Snapshot for patch 13.16b. We're gonna go over my TLDR strategy at the end. Let's get right into the comps first because there was a small B patch. It was slight nerfs to Aphelios, big nerfs to Vlad. A couple other things got touched too. But let's get into the comps. So starting in the S tier, we have Challengers, Deadeye, Bastion, and Shadow Owls. These are gonna be your bread and butter. It isn't too different from last week, but it's slightly different. There's a little mix and matching with the power levels. That is my bad. We actually had a nerf to Shen, but that directly affects the Bastion and Felios comp, but it's still good. So overall, all these comps are mainly four cost comps, so like standard leveling is going to be the preferred way to go unless you get something wacky and wild for some of the other comps. Uh, but in the A tier, we have Ionia Yasuo, still very good, very similar to the Challenger build. Karma reroll, that's going to be the first reroll on the list. Sorcerers, Strategist Azir, Void Kaisa, all very solid. Some of these are a little earth reliant, so you want like a plus one of the trait. So definitely true for Shadow Owls, Sorcerer, Void Kaisa, things like that. Ionia could use it, but they're not like super dependent on it. Uh, Noxus reroll gonna be next. Demacia, Shirima, Rek'Sai reroll, Gunners, Samira, Akshan built different, Tristana and Teemo gonna round out the S and A tier. Probably stick to these. These are gonna be your bread and butters. I've tried some of the B tier comps on my stream and while they are playable, I don't recommend them that much. So Ravenous Hunter Warwick, it's gonna be dropped down here. It's just fallen by the wayside right now. Jinx reroll, same thing. Kale reroll, oh man. I had like such a good Kale start on my stream and then it just went to garbage because this comp just doesn't really stabilize as much as it used to after the changes. Riftwalker Kasten, same thing as the Warwick and then all the other stuff down there. So let's get into the comps. And then after that, I'll tell you how I'll be playing this patch. Actually, first, let's go to the Legend tier list. So, Earth, Poro, and Orn gonna probably be the best right now. For some of the more specialized play styles, you could do Ezreal or Caitlyn. And then in the B tier, the rest of the people, Master Yi, Lee Sin, all these other guys, Vladimir dropped down to the B tier as well. It might even be C tier. Transfusion was a big part of Vladimir, and it just got nerfed pretty hard. But maybe there's still some use for Vlad. Maybe you just take it for Ascension because Ascension obviously is still gonna be really good in the Bastion Aphelios comp. So obviously pick whatever fits your playstyle the best. Like for example, some people really, really, really like Caitlyn because of the high tempo playstyle. And then other people like Orn because they just like items. And then some people like Yoloing Earth. Pick whatever fits you. That's pretty much like the whole point of Legends. Uh, but let's move on into the comps. Before we get into that, just a quick word from our sponsor. This video is brought to you by Raid VPN. Wait a minute, Raid's not a VPN. Raid Shadow Legends is a super in-depth RPG battle game with over hundreds of champions, tons of bosses, and amazing graphics all available to you right on your phone. One of the toughest bosses in Raids is a Hydra with multiple different heads, each one a complete boss battle all on its own. It sounds crazy, so let's see what we're up against. We have the Head of Suffering, which loves making you suffer, the Head of Blight, which is poisonous, and the Head of Torment that sounds like a death metal album. If you like Chaos, there's also the Head of Mischief, there's the Head of Decay, and lastly, after you get very angry when you can't beat these, there's the Head of Wrath as well. For new players, you can get your hands on Stagnite, one of the best epic champions around, plus a skin for Stagnite designed by JonTron. Just use the promo code JTSKIN before October 7th, it's as easy as that. And don't worry, if you're not a new player, you can still get Stagnite and the skin through an in-game event. If that is not enough for you, there's also a new legendary champion that you can get, called Sun Wukong. All you have to do is log on on seven different days and you get this champion completely for free. You don't need to do anything crazy. You don't need to have a really high level account. All you have to do is log in and you get it for free. With all this exciting stuff, honestly, I don't know what you're waiting for. Go ahead and scan my QR code right at the top to get all these insane bonuses, including energy refills, skill tomes, and XP boosters. Once you're in and crushing enemies, you can find me under the name Bunny Muffin, and maybe we could start one of those clans and do some of those clan-based battles, such as the Hydra Clash. Again, all the links are in the description below, and I'll see you all in the battlefield. So first, let's talk about Challengers. Challengers is a really inexpensive comp, and it's really, really good, because all your other complementary units don't really matter that much. And getting to six Challengers is really easy, because you play two one-cost units, which means you don't need a lot of gold to actually play the comp. And you also have a flex spot, so for example, you could fit the whole comp at level 7, so when you do your level 7 rolldown, if you need to stabilize on stage 4, you're going to be hitting pretty much most of your power. And then when you get to level 8 later, you could throw in a Heimerdinger or some other legendary depending on what you're feeling that day. You also have some great item holders early. You could use Ionia starts to get into challengers. You could use challengers to get into challengers, obviously. So Samira, Jin gonna be great item holders. Callista later on. And then you just run the standard Ionia. Shen, Yasuo, and Kaisa, they're all monsters on their own. 
and they're just going to win you a lot of games. If you want to read the full write-up, check out my website, bunnymuffins.lol meta, where you could watch the how to play section, look over some of the items in case you don't get the perfect items in the picture. But I believe we did cover this last week, so it's going to be playing the same way as that. Now onto Deadeye. Deadeye is really good. This is one of the two Aphelios builds, and there are actually a couple ways to play this. So the comp you see here is kind of like the base comp. It's got eight units. We got some of the legendaries and you can play this comp pretty much with any augment. It could be generic combat augments. It could be item augments. It could be like maybe one econ augment, but something that's kind of gaining popularity is playing the pumping ups. And this just gives your team a lot of attack speed. You don't need to do this, but it is an option if you're just like hard forcing the comp. You might notice on the side that there are only three dead eye and you'd be correct in noticing that. However, sometimes in the late game, you can replace some of your trait units with legendary, such as like adding in a Heimerdinger here. But of course you could play Akshan instead of Heimerdinger to get to four Deadeye if you so choose to. Overall though, this AD line is very popular because one, you're building the Rage Blade, two, you're building the Death Blade. So you have a fallback option in terms of other carries. For example, if you want to do an Akshan reroll, that's something that's certainly possible, but you could also play Zeri as a different four cost and go Gunners instead of Deadeye and then mix in Zahn with the Urgot. So really the only key four costs that you need are Sejuani and Urgot. Unfortunately, they're both like kind of the main tanks of the build or like the two main item holders in terms of your tankiness. So it is a little troublesome if they are contested, but at least for your backline, Aphelios 2 or Zeri 2 both work in this situation. You just have to switch out some of your other units. For example, if you're playing Zeri, you just add in Jinx and Echo, and then you have four Zahn along with two Gunners. Simply just take out the dead eyes and then you're pretty much good to go. But while the pumping up version isn't completely necessary, I just want to tell you all about it because it is pretty interesting to know about, but it's not required for the build. You don't need to go Master Yi in order to go for dead eyes. Uh, let's move on into the next comp though. This is going to be Aphelios Bastion. So Aphelios Bastion is going to be another bread and butter of this patch. It was nerfed a little bit. Shen got touched a bunch and Vladimir got touched a bunch too, but overall the build's still solid. It's just double Rage Blade on Aphelios plus a third item. Deathblade's going to be preferred, but I've seen other people use like Titan's Resolve or just any third damage item that you get during that game. With the plus one Bastion, you could easily go for six Bastion or you could lower down to four to add in certain legendaries. For example, Heimerdinger is just like a splash in almost every comp right now. You could even do Rise and go for like a four Invoker build. All these are available options to you. Despite the nerfs, this comp is still extremely good, as I'm sure anyone who's played this game during this patch already has seen this absolutely destroy everyone still. So you could force this with Transfusion Vlad. It's definitely still viable, even though Vlad's a lot weaker now. It's not going to be as good as before, but now I also play this comp even when I'm not using Vlad. It's still very viable, though I do think the regular Deadeye version with like random augments is probably slightly better. But hey, if you get a plus one Bastion augment at the start of the game, you're definitely still going to go for this comp. Next build up we have is Shadow Owl. So Shadow Owl is pretty interesting because you're using Gwen as the main carry then Callista as like your secondary. However, sometimes you can reroll for Callista 3 star because she is going to be beasting out a lot of fights later on. You obviously want to go for six Shadow Owls with a plus one. That's going to make the comp like S plus tier. So if you're doing Earth and YOLOing, this is one of those great options for you. Obviously, it's still reliant on hitting Senna, which is a little annoying, but she's probably also one of the best support units in the game, which makes her very, very useful and why six Shadow Owls makes this comp like literally to the next level. So when else can you play this build? You can play it in portals, which give you plus one traits such as Placidium Sanctum, I think it's called, or Placidium Library. That one allows you to just get a plus one Shadow Owl automatically. So you could plan for some of these Earth comms kind of earlier on, depending on the portal that you get. But three cost reroll pattern for this is useful, but you could also do standard and just go level up and play for legendaries instead. There are a lot of different users for the Shadow Owl spat, like Kaisa, Yasuo are gonna be pretty decent users. But the best one by far has got to be probably Cassante. I have them listed out down here, but you don't always run Cassante because you can't always get him all the time, you know? But Cassante is an absolute monster with Shadow Owl Spat because what Shadow Owl does is that it gives mana, and then with the mana, you just get tons of Cassante cast. How is that ever a bad thing? Like, what world is that even possible? What's great about this comp is that it makes use of a lot of different spatula items. For example, you don't only need the Shadow Isle spatula. If you get ever like Challenger, Juggernaut, or Slayers, you could do a lot of goofy things with a lot of legendary units. For example, Belveth can use a lot of these really well in this comp. Some of the other units can use it too. And then it just kind of takes the comp even more to the next level with all those extra emblems. But let's move on into the next comps, which are in the A tier. So Yasuo Ionia, this is pretty much the same thing as the 
Challenger build, except you're just running Ionias instead. You might be wondering, when do I go for the Ionia build? When do I go for the Challenger build? So if you get Callista two-star pretty easily, I would definitely lean more towards into the Challenger build because she's going to be like one of the secondary item holders and you could use her to like hold items for your Kai'Sa. You could do the same thing with Yasuo Ionia, but it's a little easier to like replace her because instead of running Callista, you could run Warwick as your four Challenger. But another thing that you could look for is if you have like obviously any of the Ionia augments, but if you hit an early Ari, maybe you're like, hey, maybe I should lean more into Ionia. Or if you get like a ton of good Karma items and get a lot of AP items, you could use Karma as like a secondary item holder before you get Ari. Other things that could help you decide is whether you have a two star set or two star Warwick on your board. Obviously, if you have the set, lean more towards into Ionia. And if you have the Warwick, lean more towards into the Challengers. Though Warwick can be used in both, as we said before. The last thing I will say is if you're in a portal which gives a ton of items or if you have the potential to go for nine Ionia such as on God Willow's Grove that's another time where I'd lean more towards Ionia versus the Challenger build because nine Ionia is a humongous power spike if you can get there and something like God Willow's Grove saves you a lot of gold because you don't even need to be level nine to run nine Ionia. Other portals that are good are ones that give a ton of items. This build really loves items. That's why you want Ezreal and Ornn as your legends because you have so many different item holders that you could actually make use of all the extra items, which is something that not a lot of other comps can say. So if you are on Scuttle Puddle, if you're on Shirima Bazaar, pretty much anything which gives you more items, Ornn's Forge, this is gonna be a good build. So. That's kind of how I decide between playing Ionia versus Challengers. And then you can read up more on like the leveling patterns down here. Uh, next build up we have is Karma Reroll. I actually love this build. Uh, this was probably one of the, f I think this was the first comp I played in set nine. So like, I think my very first game, it might've been Karma Reroll on the PBE. Super, 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 super duper fun because you just build pure ability power items on Karma and you don't care about the mana. And then the six invoker buff just gives your invokers like way too much mana and then they just pop everything. Really, really fun to do. There are also a ton of three costs that you can roll for at level seven. Normally a lot of reroll comps, you're only rolling for like one or two things, but this comp you could actually roll for three different things, which is really nice. It adds a lot more substance to the game because I really hate whenever I'm rolling for like only one thing, but if you're rolling for like three different things, it's kind of nice to have. So overall, you just do three cost reroll. You could always click here on the website, bunnymuffins.lol and then go to the leveling section and then get more info on that. But pretty much three cost reroll just means staying at level seven and rolling down to 50 every turn. A lot of people have asked me what reroll is. It pretty much just means rolling at a specific time. And when you're doing it for three cost, you want to find the time where it's like most optimal for a certain type of unit. And for three cost reroll, it just happens to be level seven. So let's say you are at 50 gold and then at the end of the round, you gain like 10 gold. Every round, you want to re-roll down to 50. So minus two, minus two, minus two, minus two, minus two, until you reach 50 gold and buy all the units that you care about. So in this comp, it would be Tarek, Lissandra, and Karma. And then you just rinse, repeat that every single turn until you find a good time to all in, in which case you roll below 50 gold. So then you go like all the way to zero or wherever. And that's when you want to try to hit everything to three stars. So if I have like seven copies of Karma and 50 gold and maybe like six copies of Lissandra, since Karma is the most important, I'd probably like all in at that time because there's a pretty high chance you'll hit Karma 3 with 50 gold at that point. Another time you want to all in is if you are at like one health and you're going to die the next time you lose. That's another time where you kind of need to all in because you don't really have a choice. But ideally you all in when you're pretty close to hitting Karma 3 star and like maybe some of the other ones. Let's move on into the next build, which is going to be Sorcerer. Sorcerer's is another AP comp. This is probably like the main AP comp of the patch right now. Uh, it definitely helps to have plus one sorcerer. I definitely prefer that build over everything else. Lux is going to be the main carry and then your late game is going to be Ari. Not really too much to say about this. Tarek or Swain going to be your tanks. It's kind of just like your generic vertical sorcerer trait. Vertical just means you go really deep in a trait. So for example, you go for like six or eight of that trait. Uh, next build up we have is Strategist, Azir, and Lux. Uh, this one, it's still a pretty decent build. I actually like Azir a lot now. He's not the best, but that means ideally that not too many people are going for him. So it means that if you do hit him, he's actually pretty solid. And with Azir, 
He's great with the Rageblade. He's another one of those Rageblade users that we'll talk about later in the how to play section. And then I just like stacking him with other things that complement that. So Static Shiv is really good if you have Rageblade. You could just do generic damage items such as like Giant Slayer, AP items like Archangels, Jeweled Gauntlet, any of those work. And then you complement it with the Lux. So this comp is really good if you have a lot of AP items as well. But if you have a lot of gold, it's much better to go for like Strategist, Azir, and Lux than the Sorcerers especially since this one doesn't require like a plus one of any trait. The sorcerer ones, the comp becomes like a lot better if you have plus one sorcerer because it makes it really easy to hit six sorcerer. And then sometimes you could even go eight sorcerer. But with this uh, strategist Azir and Lux build, you don't really need that at all. You could play this without any plus ones and the comp does extremely, extremely well. Honestly, this is one of the cooler comps of the set because it kind of dips into a lot of different traits and it's just pretty cool but it is very four cost reliant so there's one two three four four costs so it's a very expensive build so you definitely want to do this on a map where you can get a lot of gold or if you get like a really good econ augment such as like level up level up is very decent for this because you can reach level eight really easily and then with that you use a lot of the gold to roll down hit your team and then hopefully hopefully you can reach level nine later on and splash in a lot of random units that's another great thing about this comp Lots of random units you can kind of play. Next build up we have is Void Kaisa. Void Kaisa pretty much only play Void with plus one Void because you definitely want to go for eight Void. So it's a conditional S tier. That's kind of what it's considered right now. It's probably always going to be that way, but Void comps are very solid with the Earth build. So we'll get more into Earth later in the how to play section. But you pretty much just use Kaisa or Rek'Sai as your primary carry uh, and then Belveth for your late game. I lean more towards not itemizing Rek'Sai and if I do do a carry Rek'Sai roll, I do prefer Bruisers, and I think that actually is the next build. So let's get into that. Actually, it's not, but Noxus reroll, another three cost reroll build, very solid. You just go for Darius and Katarina three star. So this one's just going to be reroll on level seven and get them to three star. Hopefully they carry. Focus more on Darius. He's a lot better than Katarina. I don't really find that many times where my Katarina actually carries. Uh, next build up we have is Demacia. So I did a very long video on like playing only Garen and it, it went pretty decently. It went pretty decently. Not, nothing super crazy, but it did get nerfed a little bit. Is it still good? Yes, I'd say it's still good. Is it still like oppressive? Probably not. Is it worth forcing every single game? Well, if that's all you did this patch so far, it probably still is. But if you haven't, maybe just stick to like other stuff, playing flex or like playing some other comps because it definitely did get nerfed a little bit, but it's overall still pretty solid, but it's also less contested. So you kind of have to measure all that and see whether the Garen comp in Demacia is for you, but it's still pretty solid. You pretty much just need two items in this comp because of the way Demacia works. Demacia just gives like a radiant item to uh, some of your units. So I just focus on Garen items, Rageblade plus Bloodthirster, and then that's it pretty much. Random items on Lux, random items on Jarvan, and I'm pretty much good to go there. But again, there's like a note here, make sure your carries only get two items so that they can get a Radiant item from Demacia. Super duper duper important. Also, a lot of people were asking me last week whether you want Rageblade or Titan's Resolve. So you're free to go whichever one you want. I've seen much better results with Rageblade whenever I watch people play and whenever I play. But if you like building Titan's Resolve, go ahead and do it. It's a free country. It's your LP. It's not my LP. So you're free to do whatever you want. But if you're asking me which one I prefer, I prefer the Rageblade and the Bloodthirster over the Titans. Uh, let's move on into the next comp, which is the Shurima build. So Shurima, uh, it's definitely like an underrated comp. The other Shurima build, the one with Shurima and Strategist, probably a little bit better because Akshan isn't that great right now. Uh, I kind of only go for Shurima if I'm going for Azir in the other build and then I get a ton of attack damage items and then you itemize Akshan. That's pretty much the time where I actually go for the Shurima comp. But another time you could do it is if you get a plus one Shurima or if you get this little Shurima disc augment. I forget what it's called, but it's the one that shoots damage or shoots laser beams during the fight and it's incredibly, incredibly good. It's probably one of the best augments in the game. But again, pretty much I'd stick to the Strategist Azir comp unless I get specifically a Shurima spatula, which I haven't really gotten so far this patch yet, but I, I would play it otherwise. Uh, but again, just another generic four cost carry comp. And then you have the option for like Akshan if you have the items for him. Next build up we have is Rek'Sai reroll. So finally we get to talk about this. Six bruiser, definitely mandatory for this because you need as much health as possible on Rek'Sai. This comp is probably one of the most high risk, high reward comps because, because Rek'Sai two star versus three star is probably the biggest difference I've ever seen in any TFT unit. Two star, he just doesn't kill anything in the late game, but three star, 
kills everything. So it's like you either win every round or lose every round, depending on whether you have rec side two star or three star in like stage five. In stage four, it's like hit or miss. Against weak teams, you'll win. Against strong teams, you'll lose. Oh, I mean, obviously, that's kind of like how TFT works in general. But rec side two star in like stage three absolutely obliterates everything. But then it just falls off a cliff after a certain point, depending on what portal you're on. That is until you hit the rec side three star. So do everything in your power to get rec side three because that's literally the only thing that matters in this comp. Until you get to the super duper late game where you can get a secondary carry. Secondary carries can be something like a Kai'Sa, a Belveth, literally anything in the back line that could kind of assist Rek'Sai in doing damage, but pretty much she's going to be the only unit that you actually care about. The other bruisers, they're just there for like cannon fodder. And yeah, that's pretty much all there is to this comp. Three cost reroll, very hit or miss if you kind of like that play style. Next build up we have is Gunners. This is a second option for attack damage, I would say. It's either Aphelios or Zeri, but every patch, one of them's just better than the other. So you kind of switch between the two, seeing which one's better or worse. And right now, Aphelios is better. So I lean more towards into the Aphelios build, but the Zeri build's still pretty solid if you hit a free two-star Zeri as you're rolling down, because we can't go for Aphelios every game because every game has like three or four Aphelios players. So in the cases where you get lucky and you are one of the Aphelios players that get Aphelios two-star, great, stick with Aphelios. But always have a fallback option. Zeri Gunners, very good fallback options for those not so lucky in that game. Uh, next build up we have is Samira and Cassiopeia reroll. This one is still viable, but it's definitely so much weaker than it was in the past. So if you're able to win streak in the early game, this is super, super good. But if you're not, then like you're pretty much screwed or you just try to go for Darius instead. But if you get like a ton of Samiras early on and a blue buff, you get a ton of Cassiopeias, you might as well try for this comp because it's still pretty solid and can steal some games. Akshan reroll, definitely a lot weaker right now. Pretty much only go for a lot of these three cost rerolls if you have a lot of the unit. If not, don't really bother. So always keep that in mind whenever you're looking at this tier list. You pretty much just play him in a very similar build to the Deadeye build, except you add in Sharimas if you can, because obviously you want him to get buffed up even more. And this is one of those options to kind of do that. So pretty much the same build as the Deadeye build. You just go for Sharima instead of some of the other stuff. Uh, next up we have is Built Different. Built Different I've seen pretty good results on. That is with the Prismatic build different. The gold build different, probably not that great, but Prismatic one really good. They kind of need to fix that interaction. Like this whole set, Prismatic good, gold bad, pretty much the entire set. But I don't know how you make the gold one good. Uh, that's really tough. Maybe they should just remove it or something. I don't know, maybe that's the only option. But pretty much use any four cost carry in the back and use any four cost carry in the front and then try to get three stars later on because you are allowed to play duplicate units. Pretty straightforward and yeah, pretty solid build overall. Tristana reroll, still usable. Obviously only go for this if you start the game with like maybe like three or four Tristanas and like maybe three or four Maokais or something like that. It's like very, very specific for these one cost rerolls because they just fall off so hard unless you hit really early and like get to power level up. I honestly keep this comp in my back pocket still. Maybe I play it once every 20 games or something like that, or maybe once every 15 games. It really depends on how many copies of Maokai and Tristana I have, if I have the items for it. If you haven't noticed yet, at the very top we have like so many comps listed out, so there isn't that much reason to go for like Tristana reroll unless you get like the perfect opener for it. So in those cases, it's good, but pretty much any other case, try not to go for it. I guess it's pretty much just saying play good TFT. Hopefully people play good TFT because that's pretty much what the advice I just gave was. Uh, next up we have is Teemo reroll. Same rule as the Tristana reroll. This build could be really good, but again, you just need to play it in the correct positions. What are the correct positions you may ask? Having a blue buff, definitely very critical. So if you have like five Teemos at the start of the game, but you have no tiers, I wouldn't even play the comp in those cases because the Teemo, without blue buff is gonna struggle. So uh, that is not one of those perfect cases. If there are only five viable comps and this was one of them, yeah, I'd probably go for it. But right now there are like 15 comps or something. So there are just too many other options to kind of go for. Let's say I have a blue buff, but I only have one Teemo at the start of the game. Maybe still don't go for it because again, you don't have enough copies of Teemo. You kind of have to have both a lot of copies of Teemo and good items for it in order to actually go for it. That's kind of like the rule of like TFT in a lot of cases if the comp isn't like super meta. So two cost reroll pattern for this, slow roll at level six. So do that rolling down to 50 every turn and then all in later on like we discussed with some of the other build, with one of the other builds. But again, do this at level six instead of level seven. 
Uh, the main comp, the main units of this comp is going to be Teemo and Swain. Swain main tank, Teemo main damage dealer. And yeah, that's pretty much all you have to do. Try to fit in four multicaster and three Yordle later on, and you're good to go there. Onto the B tier comps. These are all like, okay. Again, you just need like very specific circumstances for them. But Ravenous Hunter Warwick's going to lead the pack there. It's, uh, it's okay. It's definitely a lot worse, but it's okay. It's definitely playable, but you just have to do it in the right spots. Jinx reroll. Again, playable, but you just need it in the right spot. So you probably want Robotic Arm on her because that Zon mod is definitely a lot better than the other ones. Uh, Kale reroll. Only do this on like Hall of the Nine when it gives like a lot of gold or maybe Scuttle Puddle because you just need like infinite gold to play this comp because you want to hit Kale three star and go level nine. <clears throat> it's a little bit of a weird comp, but again, you just need like either really good econ augments or an econ portal and hopefully try to fill the conditions of this comp. I've heard there are some ways to just go level nine with two star Kale, which is a little safer, but not as high rolly. I'd rather just play a different comp in those cases, but that option is definitely available to you. Next build up we have is Riftwalker Cassadin. This was nerfed a while back for no reason, I feel like. And yeah, it's still in the B tier. Maybe they don't like the hero augments and that's why they kind of nerfed them a lot. But yeah, two cost reroll for this. Same with all the other hero augment comps. Uh, yeah, that's going to be pretty much it for the comps. Let's go into how I would play the patch because we have all these other leftover comps down here that you could check out in your free time on the website, bunnymuffins.lol slash meta. But as for the how to play section, this is what I'm going to be doing. So I'm probably going to be playing Poro. Poro, there are better legends. Maybe like Earth is the best way to play still. But Poro is still good. But I like Poro because I'm just going to flex play. I'm not going to YOLO the Tome in the early game like I see some people doing. Because it means that you get contested a lot and you don't really have a choice to pivot out. For example, let's say two people are playing Earth and you pop your Tome and you get like a Void Spatula, let's say. And then some other person also picks Earth, and then he picks after you, and then he YOLOs a Void Spatula as well. You're just both forced to go the same comp, and I just don't want my next 30 minutes of my life decided by that. So that's why I play Poro over Earth, even though maybe Earth is like theoretically better. But the item I'm going to be prioritizing is just going to be Rageblade. There's so many good Rageblade comps out there right now, and so many good users of it. Aphelios is going to be the main one, Kaisa Callista, even Azir is there, uh, Zeri, things like that. And then I pretty much just see what my augments are, see what units I'm hitting, and then go hard into that comp. So what you could do is build a Rage Blade and then build all the flexible damage items. So what are the flexible damage items? Flexible damage items is going to be stuff like Giant Slayer, maybe the Hexec Gunblade, Handed, Handed Justice, Guard Breaker, things like that are going to be flexible damage items. This means that you could go either AD or AP carries. Contrast that with items like Deathblade or Static Shiv. With Static Shiv, you're definitely going for like an AP comp. With Deathblade, you're definitely going for an attack damage comp. With Runons, you're definitely going for an attack damage comp. So those kind of like limit your options when you build them. But if you're doing like full flex with the Rage Blade, and I'm not and I'm not saying you have to do this, it's just what I'm doing and what I feel comfortable with. Always do what you feel comfortable with if you want to like climb in the short term. I'm going to be trying to build those like flexible damage items with the Rage Blade to kind of play anything depending on what I hit. Of course, if I get some crazy augments such as like Bastion Crest or something like that, I'm just going to force Aphelios or maybe like getting Sentinel Spirit. I'm definitely going to be playing Ionia. But apart from that, if I get like social distancing or something like that, if I get like tons of stats, like some of the flexible combat augments, I'm going to try to do this like Rage Blade plus X type of build and then just go whatever I hit that game. You're not going to win a lot of games when you play this, but you'll definitely get like a lot of top fours playing like it. Second strategy is anything else. Earth is probably going to be the main one that most people are going to be doing. So YOLO your Tome early. You prefer Piltover, get a massive loss streak, cash out, win the game. Void, Shadow Owl, all the comps that I talked about before, like up here where you want like a plus one, it's all going to be pretty good. So the best ones are going to be probably Shadow Owls, maybe Bastion. Bastion spat is incredible. Ionia is decent. Challengers is okay. Uh, Sorcerer is good, Strategist you don't really care about, Void incredibly good, Noxus good, Demacia good, Shreema good, Gunners don't really care about, but yeah, like all the ones like at the top, those are going to be the ones you're really going to be gunning for. Oh, I have them listed all up here, but like you kind of get the point. You, you just YOLO the Tome early, force whatever comp it gives you, and then just go for that. If you want to be like a nerd, you could like tailor your Toma traits, but 
uh, you end up losing some HP that way because you don't get your items in right away. So only do that if you're loose streaking. But I don't like using Earth if I'm loose streaking. So that's kind of the logic there. Uh, the other option is to do the Garen reroll every game. And <laughs> again, I did like the three hour video of this, of like only playing Garen. Again, I kind of did like the three hour video of only playing Garen. So you could definitely try that strategy still. It definitely still works, but probably not as good as before, but it still works. Let's say you, uh, let's say you are scooping ice cream out of a square jar, for example, and you had a spoon that was square shaped. You're allowed to get into all those nooks and crannies to get all the ice cream out, and that's kind of how the comp was before. You're able to extract all the value out of the tub, but right now you have a circular spoon. So circular spoon, you try to get the ice cream over here, but then you have all this leftover in the corner that you just can't get. So there's some like, there's like a little bit less value there, right? It's not the end of the world, but it's just like not as good, you know, because you're leaving some value on the table whenever you're forcing this stupid Garen comp. All right, probably not the best analogy, but essentially like it still works. You still get a lot of ice cream, but it's just not getting everything out of it as it was before. But yeah, that's okay. Never mind. Just forget about that analogy, whatever. <laughs> that's going to be it for me today. Hopefully you all enjoyed this video. I'm going to be talking about some of the previews of the new set in like a couple of days. So definitely stay tuned for that and hopefully get some games in on the PBE as well. I'm assuming it's coming out on like Tuesday or Wednesday next week. So that definitely should be exciting. And also don't forget to check out my Raid Shadow Legends link in the description below or scan the QR code to get insane bonuses for new players with an epic champion. That's gonna be it for me today. I'll see you all next time. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to share and subscribe. And of course, smash that like button. Each like is an LP I gained before the next video.